The semester is not yet over, but I thought I would show kind of where I'm at in this fall 2023 semester and my start of planning for fall uh, or for spring 2024. So I have a class webpage that I kind of just maintain all my stuff. So I am annoying to myself in that I redo a lot of work every semester. So this is like my um, spring 2022. I actually have like a lot of JavaScript in here to fill things out, but then I kind of moved away from doing that for a bit. I used it for a little while. Um, and then I have my fall 2023 stuff. So this is the schedule. I'll go just go here. So I just customize these with JavaScript and stuff to I don't know, make make it easy, make it easier on me. So this is the schedule and we're currently at Thanksgiving week. So for instance, um, my 134 class is not meeting this week, but my 200 and 250 are, but I don't know if anyone's going to come to class. I'll be in class later tonight, <clears throat> at least at the time of recording. And uh, so I've set all these up and then each section has information so i've kind of adapted this over the semester we have like branching with this branching with that um let me grab my canvas example page but basically i hate working with canvas so, for instance, this is not going to show any student names unless I go to specific areas, but um, it should be FERPA safe. But basically what I do is I embed a frame into the web page because in the <laughs> not every student realizes this is here. They just go straight to modules and then they're like, why is not all of the course content here? And I'm like, you have to go to the home page. There's stuff on the home page. Um, but I embed this in here so that they can click on whatever section we're on and quickly get to this. Then these all link to either the Canvas assignment or documentation, uh, quizzes and different things. If I go to my assignments, I have different types of assignments. So we have our check-ins, like students check in each week, let me know how things are going. I had notes assignments, but I'm going to get rid of these for next semester, but it's basically a series of questions uh, and then you answer it, but it's so hard to keep track with grading that. I just mark it as complete. I don't have time to actually uh, grade everybody's notes for five different classes. Um, I have tech literacy discussions, so in my 135 it's mostly about careers because that's something we need to have in there. but. My other classes have different uh, tech literacy ones. So for instance, my first level C++ class, this loads, and let Canvas close. Um, I have stuff like, you know, how do we navigate the command line? Jobs in tech, bias and ethics in tech, professional networking, and just different things. Um, every section has a kind of, it's not a quiz quiz, you can take it as many times as you want, but it's kind of to introduce uh, the concepts. It's a way to give points to make sure that students are at minimum reading a certain amount of information. So for instance, let me just throw this over on my other screen real quick, real quick just in case. So the intro. For functions, Canvas, I kind of, I hate Canvas, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. Um, it'll introduce concepts and then have some sort of question to verify, you know, did you read it? Did you understand it? Um, so you go through, there's things, this is kind of like how you'd have building a sentence in Duolingo, but here it's like, what is included in function signature? Return type, function name, parameter list, and so on. Uh, create a function header that is called display menu. And then um, it takes a string for the menu. There we go. 
and all of that. So it has like little drawings and stuff. And um, again, this was, I just created this assignment. I used to have quizzes that were more review, but this is more of like a preview. They still have stuff that they're supposed to read, <clears throat> but not everyone reads. Um, then we have our programming exercises. I'm going to rename these to labs and then do something else for exercises. Programming projects, I have a pre and post test, and then I have like the mastery checks, which are the main tests. I have them separated by topic for CS200 especially because I feel like it's really important to emphasize the specific topic we're co covering. Um, mixing it all in together makes it kind of hard. <clears throat> and I've just never been good at taking tests, so I feel like by not intermixing a bunch of topics, it leads to less confusion when prepping. But that's how I do that. So I have my schedule here in this at the moment. It's one page that contains every schedule, but if I put something in the git string, it'll only show one course. Or I could display just some unit, but that's not really useful. Um, and so we have all of our different stuff down here. Hash tables, intro to trees. But on my main page, I'm going to be redoing a lot of this, but I have like the resource list, which lists all of my uh, video lecture links for the different topics as we go through. Uh, these are older textbooks that I wrote, but I'm going to be updating them. It would probably just be better to open them off my hard drive because uh, it's not going to preview on GitLab. Textbook. I originally wrote these in LaTeX, um, but I am changing everything to org mode. So for instance, here's algorithm efficiency, but basically I made a textbook and then it's free. Ugh. So it has graphics somewhat, but some chapters I got less, <laughs> less uh, energy. So I didn't put as much in there. And I had one, I have one for data structures. I haven't updated my discrete math one in forever because I haven't taught that class in a while. There's also like a quick reference page. But see, the thing is, like, nobody actually, as far as I know, go to, goes to these pages because I have, like, the reference on how to install and use Visual Studio, creating files in your project, how to create the project, um, code blocks, some other options, how to use Git, Git setup, common uses. I feel like I'm starting to get to the point where uh, students are getting a lot better at using Git, <laughs> so I, I guess I'm getting stuff good now. Uh, in my 235 class, we set up SFML as like an optional last assignment, link to style guide, common errors, um, and then my C++ quick reference. So usually I like link here if someone asks a question if about something or I have this, but you know, I don't know, nobody uses it. <laughs> so let's say we say um, memory and then it comes up with a common error. These are just common errors that I see from students a lot. So, and then also just common instructions like, what does it mean to write a getter? Well, this is what a getter, get uh, accessor function is. Um, I have some information on like portfolio project ideas. So that's in here if they needed ideas for portfolio projects. And then <clears throat> what I've been working on for next semester this is my latest page mock-up, but my main idea is I want to kind of get away from like having things in separate places, but I'm still going to have to like have canvas spaced quizzes. But what I've been doing is, um, wait, where's my courses page? Since I've been moving everything to org mode files, which I have in here, I've been like slowly converting my LaTeX notes to org mode notes, and then I can export those to HTML and PDF. So that opens here. Speaking up. 
you know, my various special classes and stuff that I made for it. So I've been basically converting everything throughout the semester to use this. So for instance, um, this is my 134, my uh, beginner, like very first level programming course. And so I have the reading material in here. And then um, exercise documentation as well. And quick reference for different things. So I know it's not quite as interesting as like the some of the web pages I've made in the past um, have been good. But at the same time, when you create a, uh, a site, <clears throat> an assignment text on a web page it just makes it harder to um, maintain so for instance here's some old documentation yeah it's nice and it's dark mode um, i can embed a video here technically i could do that or at least link a video in org mode but um, then it has this i would also have stuff like this where it's a hint. If you need a hint, you click on that and it opens up. Like how, how I don't remember how to store a variable. This is for the while loops. So this is early in. And at some point I'm like, you should really review this previous topic. If, <laughs> if you're all the way further into the class and you're still asking how to do a for loop. So, um, I had like little hint things there, but what I've been doing more so is having like little context boxes. Um, or try to link to where they can review for things as needed. But again, most of this is the same as what's in my LaTeX document. I've just been moving it over to org mode. So, okay, here's like a context, like what is if and if? Like if you missed that earlier in the functions uh, reading, well, here it is again. To try to give some more information. What? Why do I put m underscore with my variables? And so on. Um, and then here's an example of the questions and answers, but I am going to be basically just putting solutions in there. So yeah, and then the idea here is like this is just very, very rough as like the whole semester textbook for next semester. Here's the tentative schedule. I've been trying to plan that out um, about the course. Here's actual reading. I've split it up by topic, so none of that stuff is done. But then the lab assignment information goes in here. And so that's all going through that. How to take a screenshot, press that button. <laughs> um, but then, because it's org mode, I can also extract as PDF. Uh, if I get it for far enough along, the school bookstore will be able to print it for me for like at cost thing. Students can buy it for at cost, so like 10 bucks, if they want a physical copy. And then we can get the same information. Now I need to format my LaTeX stuff here. I have formatting for my HTML side, not so much for the PDF export, but that's just something I'll be working on over the break. So that's something I'm doing. Uh, what else? Well, another cool thing that I've been working on since the summer of this year are my automated unit tests to test student work. So we've been using Repolit for, um, oop, I don't want that page. Sorry, I'm looking at this on my other monitor. I... I have mixed feelings about Repolit, but we've been using Repolit for my first level C++ class. And uh, because it was heavily suggested to me that I should be doing group work, I tried to make this kind of like... The hope was students would ask each other questions as they worked through it, and then each th topic I'd have an A, B, and C version. So for instance, this one's count up, this one's multiply up. This one's countdown, or with, um, let's see, calculate. This one is calculate arrays. Student C would do calculate a sum. Student, or B would be sum, and C would be factorial. So I have this all in here. I currently have the instructions as text files, and really, people haven't been complaining about it. <laughs> but um, I'll probably, I'll move these to 
org mode as well. And then over the summer, I worked really hard on writing these automated bash script tests, which I can use in Repl.it. Um, because, and the students can also call these as well, because then, I mean, technically this is running a Nix, Linux type of machine. So if I do test A, it sh will say whoever student name, put their name at the top, run, it'll build their stuff, run these tests. If it doesn't match the expected output, it'll do it in red, but I can still go back and check the out actual output. Like maybe they just have spacing in different places or didn't phrase things the same. So I can at least more easily check to make sure that the functionality is working and then you can go in and look at it and make sure that they have good indentation and good coding style. So this is an important thing that's been very helpful in my grading for this CS200 class. So beyond that, I have so much I want to change up for the next semester, but this is a list of all of the assignments from this semester for CS200 and like the topics. And I was thinking of like, do I want to have a useful, um, like single set of topic or a recurring topic theme type of program we're writing throughout the semester? Um, right now it's just kind of like whatever sounded good at the time. So for instance, for if statements, student A would do get the points, get the uh, total points possible on an assignment, get the student score, calculate the percentage, and display a message if you got a perfect 100. Student B would be like, uh, get your bank balance and then the withdraw amount, and if it happens to go below zero, display an overdrawn message. Student C would be, get the total gas capacity for your car and the current gas amount, and if the ratio is less than 25%, then uh, display low on fuel. So different kind of permutations of the same topic, same challenge, um, but they're kind of all over the place. Sometimes it's about products, sometimes it's, um, you know, just various other things. It's banks or pizza slices or whatever else. So I'm kind of wondering if I should think of like, okay, maybe we'll see you know, I've been modeling things after like an Uber Eats app a lot for like just something that's conceptually familiar. Um, you always see like banks as an example, your deposit and withdraw. That's a really straightforward, easy example for like especially basic calculations. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just kind of thinking of like the goal is to minimize the amount of prep I'm doing. So I don't want to change things too much. But um, I'm mostly going to keep what I have and reorganize things because I also redo units every semester and say, okay, this, this order didn't work as well as I thought. I'm going to maybe move structs like way before we cover classes. So we're at least putting variables together on, in a data type. And then as we get further in with like functions and stuff, maybe then we cover classes and then it's already kind of familiar. Different things. Um, something I'm planning on doing for 200, I've written some nonograms, basically some Picross puzzles. I'm planning on assigning Picross puzzles as some, like, one of the side homework assignments. So, in a way, it's hopefully to get them to practice, um, what is the Sherlock word, uh, <laughs> deduction? Deduction and, um just an analysis of a system of a thing and also since it'll come the result is a image it'll be a little easy for me to grade i can just kind of look at it and say it's right or not and i have hints down here so they start off easy by the end um they get a little bit harder so i've <laughs> been working on those because uh, i want them to practice problem solving more and in my 200, but also 300, or not 300 level, but my second C++ class, I might, I want to do something where they have to do more debugging and just give them like um, code with errors and have them figure it out because I think we need to work a lot more on the problem solving of it, all of it. It's one thing to like be learning 
Uh, we do cover debug tools and writing unit tests, but we don't do it throughout the entire semester. And then when students need help diagnosing issues, I tell them like, you, you should put a breakpoint here in this spot. Um, but I don't know if they've been using it all semester and are familiar with it or not. <laughs> so, you know, it's a very important tool. Uh, finally, the other thing I've done this semester, and I don't know how to show it on stream. I'm just going to open up one of my other repositories, a non-related repository. Um, but what I have been doing is for my object-oriented programming class, I have a code base. So this one for this semester is modeled on like Spotify, because Spotify has three things that are very similar. It has music, podcasts, and audiobooks. Each of those have three similar things. They ha Music has tracks, or sorry, let's go albums. So then podcast has shows, and audiobooks has book. Then each of those, they have a music artist, a creator, podcast creator, or a audiobook author. Those are kind of, you know, an agalo and and you know what I'm saying, analog. <laughs> Those are, I don't know what I'm saying. I don't even know what I'm saying. Those are kind of the same. And then they have, um, each album has tracks, each podcast episode has, or each podcast show has episodes, each audiobook has chapters. So we boiled those down, and if that's the basic code base, and then I've been creating issues for them, and they have been basically, a, they go in and choose what issue they want to work on. So it'd be like music, track, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I'll put the whole description of what they need, what the criteria is in the description area. I'd create an issue. I have milestones and um, uh, labels and all that stuff set. So then the student would come in here, they would assign one to themselves based on, you know, whatever they thought was interesting. And then eventually, you know, they'd work on their thing, it'd be in a new branch, they push the branch, they would create a merge request, and then they would have another student uh, review their code. Or really, they get graded on reviewing someone else's code um, so that they're not stuck on the whole waiting for someone to respond to them. So they were hopefully review someone else's code. Um, all of the tasks are similar. So for instance, we did exceptions and it was like, add an exception for music track. If the track length is less than zero or the track ID is less than zero, throw an exception, just kind of a basic thing like that. Everyone did it. Hopefully if they were stuck, they could look at a merge request and figure out like, oh, this is how someone else did it. I had my version, so they had music in podcast and uh, book, audiobook, but I did like the user classes and the user and playlist classes. So they would be able to look at my stuff as well. And then basically I would be the one merging everything in. Um, so I got some good merge, <laughs> manually merging things practice and I have better ideas for next semester. So um, that's been a big thing that we've done this semester in my T35 class. And again, that's my object-oriented programming. Um, also trying to think of ways to make my 250 class better. Uh, it's kind of hard to v make a variation on a theme when it's just do these data structures. Um, I have different programs each semester of like, here's a program using a stack and a queue, or here's a program using a binary search tree. Um, but when you're just kind of covering the data structures, it's like, what do you change up? I don't know. Um, I still have like review topics that get covered. So if you'll see here, 235 and 250 have overlap because I want to make sure that my data structure students know or remember exceptions and templates. Um, they aren't required to take 235. That's not a transfer course, but you can take it for either like a, what's the word? You know, the, the stuff you take as the extra stuff. <laughs> I can't think of the word right now. Um, but 
but some people some students will take it just uh for extra experience or they'll take it maybe as part of a um certificate or something but it's not really required for the transfer classes i still think it's good to take but then if they go into 250 they might not have seen these topics otherwise so we have these overlap and i also go over debugging and testing and source control and then they diverge from there so anyway have i really been talking for 25 minutes <laughs> i just thought it would be interesting to go over like some of my class stuff and it's stuff that i, I improve every semester always try to make it better all this stuff is available online and it's publicly visible you know anything that is stuff that i create um that's all publicly visible i'm going to be kind of compiling these into a book format where i'm hopefully going to put everything in one spot again let's look at the table of contents up here so for, like the course contents is like the actual like reading and exercises and labs and then we have problem solving practice right now that's the nonograms but also will be like debugging practice i'm going to put the reference information here so people actually look at it hopefully and then some syllabus information at the end but that's not for anyone outside of the class so i had to buy a big water bottle because we didn't have vending machines anywhere on campus for a month. <laughs> it's not a water bottle, but you know, I need to be able to drink things while I teach. So just water. Okay. Well, I hope that was interesting. That was a look into some of my course stuff. I always get kind of excited around this time of the uh, semester because I'm done with my class prep. I have all the assignments written and they're up there. It's just going to be a butt ton of grading. So that's kind of, I still have more free mental space because I'm not like planning and writing assignments and writing tests. I'm just kind of going over and reviewing and giving feedback. So I have more brain capacity. Um, so then I start thinking about the next semester in a hope to try to lighten my workload for the next semester. I hope, I hope the goal is to not be prepping all the freaking time in the future. <laughs> Cause I keep, I always come up with ideas on how I want to make things better and change things. And then I change things and then I'm working my butt off the entire semester. So I would like to get something to where it's like, here's the thing it's the book i will make corrections or i'll maybe change out things here and there over time but let's not be revamping every class every semester that would be great or even one class every semester that's a lot because <laughs> my 200 i've mostly kept the same my 235 i've been doing a lot of changes to so then that's been the big like time sink uh but this week, my extended family's not doing anything on Thursday. We're doing it Sunday, so I'm looking forward to just going to work today and tomorrow and then having some time to relax and chill out and also get grading done. But, yeah. Teaching programming, yay! 